Today's episode, we talk about Justin Herbert. We talk about some difficult keep trade cuts, especially some people who work for this podcast, and then some mailbag. Don't miss a moment. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, ho. that one was good, man. You're back. You're back, baby. It's good to be back, America. Thursday, June 3rd, I'm fueled by the sun, Mike, the Phoenix Suns. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Fantasy Basketballers. Look, man, it's been 12 years. <laughs> 12 years since I could hijack a football show with Suns news. Isn't that the priority here? Make the Laker fans upset? Oh. <laughs> oh, we only, have, <laughs> we only have 17 championships. <laughs> We got zero. Take that, L.A. <laughs> You've got 17 <laughs> different reasons not to be upset right now. Uh, welcome into the fantasy <laughs> footballers. <laughs> Those of you still remaining. Which is like most of the mostly, country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's one place that's <laughs> tuned out now. We have keep trade cut today, Jason. Oh, fantastic. Uh, we have some news to talk about some mailbag to get into no joke just got a text from my father he's re-watching the game from last night oh, wow. that's what he texted that's how that's how high we're right now here in in phoenix uh youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers subscribe click the bell appreciate everybody checking out the ultimate draft kit so far uh have got a lot of great feedback from people who love the refreshed new app version mm -hmm. and uh it's been fun exciting and lots more coming this off season twitter at the ff ballers instagram.com slash fantasy footballers i'm happy to be here with you fine gentlemen oh it's a great day it's a great day let's do some buy sell buy or sell presented by pristine auction Buy or sell Justin Herbert, 36 touchdown passes in 2021. Last year, rookie season, 15 games, 31 touchdowns. I have him statted for fewer than 36, so I have to sell this one. I still have him as that my... That was anticlimactic. <laughs> no anticipation at all. I, well, I'm getting out of the way. I'm getting uh, out of the way for you guys. Okay. But I, I will say this. He's my number eight overall quarterback, so he's still a top... 10 quarterback, but I do not have him reaching that threshold. Now, you, you realize he'll be playing possibly two more games this year. I do. I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which, I mean, last year's numbers, 31 touchdowns, play two more games, you're, you know, you're right up against the 36 mark, but I think you're underneath it. Yeah, I think the 36 mark is a good threshold. When, when I saw this and I looked at my numbers, I had him at 36 and a half. Looking a little deeper... I, I think that the touchdown rate for him uh, – so here, here's something interesting. Since 1975, the highest rookie touchdown rates, of which Justin Herbert is tied for the third highest. Uh, but if you look at anybody who had a 5% touchdown rate or higher, only one and, – and there's good quarterbacks here. There's Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott. Only one did not regress in touchdown percentage. That doesn't mean that they had a worse sophomore season, but it does mean they threw – uh, a fewer percentage touchdowns of touchdowns per attempt. Per attempt. And, um, you know, looking at this, I think that that will probably be the case for Justin Herbert. It really comes down to the weapons for me. And the big difference for touchdowns is Jared Cook. I know that seems weird, but if Jared Cook is spent, if he's done, if, if the, you know, the light bulb is just dimming and about to go out, and his career is over, then I think the opportunities for touch. Keenan's never been a real touchdown strong guy. Now, I think Mike Williams is being undervalued. Everyone is just crapping all over Mike Williams. Exactly. He had a very bad year last year. He's still a good player. He's, he's uh, you know, an al alpha athlete, so I think he could step up. But losing Hunter Henry, if Jared Cook comes in and has it, then he should beat this mark. If what? he comes in and, you know, is really – 
a role player, um, then that's then I'm going to take the under. I'm actually going to sell. It's a pretty high bar. Last year, Chargers fifth in pass attempts, sixth in passing yards, second most plays in the NFL, played very fast, injured defense. I mean, you've been making a lot of um, – You've discussed that defense improving. So, and new, you know, new system. So you could have a reduction. Mike, are you buying or selling? Uh, I am selling. I have him just under the mark as well. But it, his touchdown rate of 5.2%, that's not, you know, like the league average is like 4.4, 4.5%. So he didn't. He he didn't come out here and do like a Lamar Jackson type of situation where it's every one of his ten passes turns into a touchdown. So he could easily hit that threshold. Uh, I mean, if if you're looking at the what can Jared Cook do? Hunter Henry only contributed four receiving touchdowns this past year. If Jared Cook does chip in like Jason's talking about, then he could easily go over. But I it was it was just such a strong season for Justin Herbert. That I'm gonna bet that it's uh, a slight regression comes in, and not that I'm selling Herbert at all as a fantasy quarterback. I'm with you, Andy, that he's he's in my QB one range, but 36 touchdowns I think would be where, that, that would be a tremendous season. Where do you have him in your rankings? I, I'm looking at mine, 10. and I sold. I've got him at my quarterback seven, so I think he's gonna have a a solid season. But the 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 touchdown percentage, I just can't see going north. The biggest regression in my statistical projection was just was bumping down the the rushing touchdowns. Right, like five. Maybe Herbert <laughs> surprises us, and he really is that type of a player where he's like Dak, you know, athletic and mobile enough. And then when he gets near the goal line, he just happens to sneak in a handful of touchdowns every single year. But I have him coming down from there. That's why I have him. That's probably why he's. A couple spots lower for me than now. You guys. Is this going to be difficult on you? Like, are you still going to? Are you still willing to call him Big Herbs if he doesn't get to thirty six? Oh, yeah. Did he change his last name? No, but I mean, is he medium Herbs? Mm, little Herbs. Little Herbs. If he gets under thirty, uh, under thirty. Yeah, under thirty is Little Herbs. <laughs> We're going to retract his name. Yeah, you have to. You can't throw for fewer than thirty touchdowns and then still be called Big Herb. That's not fair. Um, now I don't. It's not fair to the herbs out there. It's not fair to the Foot Clan. They, they, these names should mean something. So, like um, Smash Jackson. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but to speak to your point <laughs> on the rushing work, you know, the, the first half of his season, he was on pace for over 400 rushing yards. The second half, he was on pace for 144 rushing yards. He, he when he was starting out, he used his escapability more as a weapon, um, and then as he got you know, more used to the playbook. The well, scheme, he had Austin Eckler back at the end. And Austin Eckler back. Uh, he was able to re stay in the pocket a little bit more. Well, and you can check down. You don't have to run when you can throw it to Eckler. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. That was what, two sells, one buy, Jason? That was three sells. Oh, you did sell. I did. I, I, I wasn't adjusted. listening. <laughs> After I got mine out of the way, remember I said I cleared the way? That you was see, just yeah. so I could daydream. He's like, I'm getting out of the way, and I'm like out of, I'm yeah. out of here. Yeah. That's that's right. Buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. This news today has been curated especially for Mike Wright. Because we're, we're talking either um, champions of yesteryear or champions of today. <laughs> we are. Uh, we have... Uh, something very special. Yeah. Mediocre signing of the week. The Texans have signed running back Rex Burkhead. Oh, sexy Rexy. I mean, is this Texans backfield thing? Is this like, what are they doing? Are all these like uh, over the hill running backs just going like, no, they're giving money out over there. They're giving money out. So I think that is the, <laughs> there's gold in them, their hills. <laughs> That's the weird question of like, you're, you're saying, how are the Texans building this, you know, lowest Vegas win total odd roster. <laughs> and what they're doing is they are bringing in every veteran they can for a little bit of money. And then I think they're just going to say, like, oh, the competition will win out and the cream will rise. We're going to bring it. They've signed, like, 600 veterans the this offseason. The cream has gone bad. <laughs> yes, and sometimes <laughs> the milk has expired. <laughs> um, usually when we have, you know, oh, this player has signed, this player has changed teams, I would come and I would follow up and say the ultimate draft kit has already been updated. We chose not to update this because <laughs> I don't think Rex Burkhead makes the roster. Maybe he does. 
Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram. It, no, no, but Philip oh, okay. Lindsay. I thought you were going through them all. No, no, no. Philip Lindsay, it, uh, July. He's, his birthday is July twenty fourth. He will be turning twenty seven years old, and Philip Lindsay is the spring chicken. Oh, yeah. of this running back crew. What are they doing? They're getting experience. Well, Mike. you see, They're Rex getting... Burkhead was available, Mike. <laughs> Pick them up. Rex Burkhead, Mark Ingram, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay on a team that will probably average about 14 points per game. Guys, I'm getting texts from my dad who's rewatching the Suns game, uh -huh. and he's giving me score updates. Wow. From a game he's already seen. What, so, what is he doing? He just let me know they're up by 21 with 7.22 left in the second do you, quarter. Do you need to leave and go now watch, he did, he watch did, the game He again? did watch the game yesterday. Did you? Do but we, in, in case something changes, I'm getting the updates right now. Do we need to bring your dad to a home? <laughs> is, is it time? <laughs> what, is, what is happening right now? Does he know that it's, it already Maybe happened? Maybe he doesn't is know. This, is this the upside, though? Is this the upside of <laughs> you know having your mind adjusted? You get to watch the hits over and over and over. My oh, father man. has just signed with the Texans. <laughs> I can't, I've got like 10, 10, 10 updates. What is happening? I don't know, man. I got to go see about, <laughs> tell see about my, somebody to help tell, out. Tell them don't watch the third quarter. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. All right, Cowboys. Tight end Blake Jarwin says he anticipates being ready to roll. Both of those are in quotes. Mm. Um, I find this uh, curious because he isn't ready to roll now. Well, no, to be fair, it's ready to roll in training camp, which means yeah. it's not like a timeline. Like a lot of players are like, I expect to be ready to go for the start of the season. This is I'm ready to roll in training camp. Like yeah, that means it was a week one ACL tear. Yeah, you're. You, well, he I should know, be fully OTAs good. OTAs he's been working out on the side. Um, I am the uh, maybe I guess the only one here that is very. I, I don't think Blake Jarwin has a very good season. Um, I think he has a a fine season, and I know that it, I was the uh, one of the uh, the conductors of the Blake Jarwin hype train, and it's, and I've been more mum on it. This year, I mean, one, he's coming off the ACL. That's not my favorite thing in the world for a mid-level tight end to be coming off of that injury. But the uh, the difference for me this year for Blake Jarwin is just that CeeDee Lamb has broken out. Where last year coming into the season, yeah, he's a high-level, uh, high-draft capital rookie. We expect him to be something. But Jarwin was already higher, it, so to speak, in the pecking order of the offense, and and CD had to earn his way there, where now he's there. Yeah, and I, I would My add that the, that the, you know, what Dalton Schultz did last year was at least prove that he could be serviceable and that they can rely on him in, in certain situations. He, he wasn't phenomenal, but it going into last year, it looked like Jarwin had that role to himself, and Dalton Schultz would be a backup, and I could see them utilizing both of these guys to start the year. He's my tight end 15. So that sounds like I'm kind of high on him. But really, once you get outside of the top tight ends, it's all irrelevant. It's all streaming in the right matchup. Mm -hmm. you're not a guy you're going to play week in and week out. Yep, that's my argument, the Dalton Schultz one. Uh, if you listen to beat writers in Dallas, it was a breakout season for Dalton Schultz. Even though he's not the athletic profile of Blake Jarwin, he caught 63 passes. He had 615 yards. And even when like Tyler Higbee had a breakout season for the Rams – once Gerald Everett shared some of that role with him. So you are, matter. but you are in fact saying that Blake Jarwin would have had a breakout season yes. last year. Yes. Is that good enough for you? I, it I, is, he it is a small bit. He absolutely would have. <laughs> he would have had a bigger season than Dalton Schultz. You were so close to glory, Mike. What's funny is Dalton Schultz did that with, well, maybe he, it's the reason he did it, but no, no Dak. Yeah. Yeah, Dalton Schultz could have had a bigger season. Which means Blake Jarwin could have had an even bigger season. Oh, man. What could have been? Blake Jarwin probably would have won MVP is what I'm saying. I think there's a good chance. At least a top three in the running. Right. right. He's not a quarterback, so it's difficult to. Right. That's to the reason. Speaking of Mike's champions, Washington head coach Ron Rivera said, oh. Gib said Antonio Gibson can make a big jump in 2021. What else did Antonio Gibson say, though, Andy? Uh, he yeah. said that the toe injury that forced him to miss the last two games of the year has lingered throughout the start of the off season and that he is still rehabbing that and that he's sucks. able to make cuts he needs to but it's something he'll have to monitor moving forward that is not what i want to it was hear. also not the last two games of the year because he came back and played football yeah it, so um, fresh off of his toe injury my champion ran the ball 
19 times for 75 yards in the final game of the season. I mean, look, you you know, I've I've talked about it on the show. I'm in on Antonio Gibson this season. I think he's going to be so much more involved. I think the team wants him to be a massive part of the passing game. I don't think they want J.D. McKissick's quality dump-offs. That They want home run ability. They want to have, you know, the amount of plays in Gibson's hands where 1-20 in 20 is going to go for 40 yards and change a game. And but this this is concerning because my my understanding and expectation prior to hearing about this was that that toe injury was completely gone. I mean, this is months and months later. If it's lingering, um, I've reached out to Matthew Betts, our injury expert. We'll we'll um, Get the update, UDK update the UDK yeah. and and I'm sure as we continue to talk about Gibson going forward, we'll see if that is a normal timeline recovery, nothing to worry about, or if that means that there could be. Uh, more potential for re-aggravation or, or problems in 2021. I would be buying the dip. If if people are out there letting this affect their view of Antonio Gibson in September, right now, uh, I would jump on that. I'll just throw out that J.D. McKissick was much better yards per reception than Gibson last year for that home run ability. And he caught a lot of passes. He the, did catch a lot of passes. Yeah, I mean, he had 110 I'm, targets, 80 receptions. Yeah, I'm not saying that J.D. McKissick is not good or that he that that Antonio Gibson clearly showed more home run ability on the, the targets that he had. But clearly, I mean, we've seen them both on the field. When you talk about the explosive athleticism, Gibson's a, an entire another level. And, and it takes the reps to be able to get that. I... I mean, we'll see how they utilize him, but that is my expectation. Where do you have team, Antonio Gibson? Um, I have Antonio Gibson right now as running back coming up. I got, have him at RB11. I've got him at 13. Okay, I have him at 13. Um, any other Mike-related news that we need to get into there, Brooks? Oh, man. Uh, you got any old old flames, old fantasy flames that you want to talk about? Anything going on with uh, how's Jeremy Robert, Hill? Is Robert Griffin doing anything? Jeremy Hill? <laughs> no. Wait, what was that, Brooks? Yeah, Jeremy Hill. Ah, uh, we don't talk about him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. New phone. Who did? <laughs> All right, that was today's. Uh, well, did you? Did you? I know you're a leg man uh, with Mr. AJ Dillon. Did you see the? Uh, this is the thing now in the oh, offseason. Yeah, All we do is post quads. The, the, the geo quads. I'm telling you right now, if you're a professional running back in the NFL, you better have some quadricep muscles. Yeah, I mean they all do. That's that's the thing. It's like if you they're just wearing shorter shorts than they exactly. used to wear. Exactly. If you zoom in on a good amount of their, you know, exposed leg, it's gonna look good. They're a professional running back. They're gonna be what? That guy's got some hold, muscles on hold him. Hold on. What I want to see is the guy that's got no quads, but is a superstar running back. Well, if, if I want to see the the rail legs. You we need to see Melvin Gordon's quads. We need to see this. We need to figure this out. They're probably pretty good. They might be, but the, I, do you not remember the photo of him next to like Mixon and someone else? Oh, it didn't look good. Oh, and and he had he had the Mike Wright calves. I'm guessing Ronald Jones's calves are in question too. Well, no quads. Quads. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. We're, remember, we're, we, didn't we meet? Quad Ron, watch. We met Ronald <laughs> Jones, and we were like, "You're very small." Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was, and we met Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Right and he afterwards, was much larger. R Ronald Jones was criticized for being, you know, just over 200 pounds, and I met him, and he, you know, he looked like. This is this looks like a big strong athlete, you know. I you know, he he should be able to do some stuff. And then it was like ten minutes later, we go and meet Melvin Gordon. We're like, Oh my goodness, you're a superhero. <laughs> like Ronald Jones looked like a friend of ours that's just a just he a gem out. rat. He I mean, out. he yeah. is all this guy looked like I don't know I don't know people like that. They they Melvin, are, yeah. Melvin Gordon was from a different planet and Krypton. Yes, exactly. So um. Yeah, and then their careers have shown have bared that out a little bit. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. Switch your league to the fantasy growing fantasy platform today. And before we jump into keep trade cut, guys, we have a, a lot to talk about. We want to thank today's sponsors. And uh, one of the things that's happened over the last year and a half is that there's a lot more awareness about mental health, which is a good thing. It's great. And um, there might be something out there interfering with your happiness, preventing you from achieving your goals. There's a lot that people need help with, whether it's parenting, you've got relationships, you've got work, you've got a lot of things that can weigh you down. And what BetterHelp does is they help you assess, they help assess your needs and they match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And, you know, they do it in a way that is really fitting with the modern age 
where, look, this is not, again, this is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is a professional counselor and is done securely online. And if you're somebody that just wants to communicate via words, right, you don't want to sit down and do a video, that's fine. They can help you that way. Um, if you want to schedule a weekly video um, call or a phone session, they can do that as well. And that's without the uncomfortable waiting room experience of another counselor or something like that. So uh, check them out. They're committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, and they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Visit betterhelp.com slash footballers. That's better, H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an ex experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, BetterHelp and Fantasy Footballers listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash footballers. And before we get to keep trade cut, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm going to keep Keeps. my hair I'm going to trade you're, you're having to wear hats, and I'm going to cut male pattern baldness oh. with keeps. Uh, look, more than 50 million men in the United States suffer from male pattern baldness. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can help prevent hair loss, and keeps offers both of them. Keeps is a longtime sponsor, and they offer a simple, stress-free way to help keep your hair. It's a convenient virtual doctor consultation. Medications that are they're sent right to your door in discreet, discreet packaging every three months. You don't even have to leave your home. It's uh, it's affordable as well. Treatments start at ten dollars a month, and Keeps offers the generic versions. They have more five star reviews than any of their competitors, and prevention is extremely important. Treatments can take four to six months to see the results, so act now so you're looking good when you want to be. And if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free that's keeps.com slash footballers get your first month free k-e-e-p-s dot com slash footballers keep trade cut Good news, the uh, the Suns are up 28 with 318 left in the second. Oh, oh man, I was getting worried they were going to lose that massive lead that they had got, a couple days ago. He's got a <laughs> – oh, Dad. Oh, Dad. He's got the great sports almanac over there. <laughs> oh, to have him make a bet. I'll bet they win by 30. I, I'm think, I hope it goes the way it went yesterday. Um, keep trade cut. Pretty simple. Let's start by looking at some second-year running backs. DeAndre Swift, Detroit running back, J.K. Dobbins of Baltimore, and Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Kansas City. All of these players, similar ADP. Consensus rankings, pretty close. What are you doing? Um, yeah, I mean, when, when I look at this, it's the cut is easy for me. It's J.K. Dobbins. I love the talent. I love the fact that this team runs. You saw him dominate. It's easy? It's easy for me because he is the one that I am the most fearful of due to the lack of pass catching. He's not a Derrick Henry-sized outlier behemoth that I feel like uh, can carry the ball 370-plus times like Derrick Henry did last year. So he's going to have to rip off outstanding touchdown run after outstanding touchdown run. I'm not talking about inside the five. I'm talking about they're at the 18, and he scores a touchdown on that play over and over and over, which he did last year. So you know uh, this isn't anti-J.K. Dobbins, but out of these three, he doesn't catch the ball. So he, th that, to me, out of these three makes him an easy cut when the other two are very solid pass catchers with uh, quarterbacks who have at least shown that they will throw to a running back um, in the past. The keep for me is Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Clyde Edwards-Alaire has really just, I mean, the, the disrespect for his disappointing season has gone way too far. People don't think he's any good, and this is coming from someone who was not his biggest fan coming out of college, but the reality is he's tied to the Kansas City Chiefs offense. That was still his rookie year, right? There's still stuff he can learn. We're acting like well, we saw what he could do last year, and he'll never get better. Next. Next. <laughs> it, like, maybe he's going to get more involved in the passing game. Maybe, you know, we, I remember those games over and over. Wait, where, does J.K. Dobbins learn, though? J.K. Dobbins. He can't learn? J.K. Dobbins is a very good pass catcher. It's irrelevant. It's not him to learn. It's Lamar Jackson that would have to learn how to throw the ball to a running back. He doesn't do it. Yeah, he chooses not to. And, he, I, and that's probably a good choice. Like, if I had 
the ability he has with my legs, I'd be like, do I want to dump it off to this guy or just just run away from everybody for 20 yards? Dobbins is the easy trade for me because he is the uh, player that the NFL reality doesn't match the fantasy reality because of the things that you said. So I think most people's perception of J.K. Dobbins this year will be higher than his fantasy output. So I think he's going to be he's going to be my trade. The keep is hard. Like, who's got the biggest ceiling of these Clyde. three Edward running backs? I think Clyde has it because of the Chiefs, because of the total points that the offense is going to score, the ability to be involved in the passing. I mean, really, the depth chart there is still great for him. I'll keep Clyde. I'll trade Dobbins, and I'll cut Swift. Like, when you're talking ceiling, who are you more concerned about taking touches? Uh, Daryl Williams or Jamal Williams? <sighs> Williams off. <laughs> I love it. It's Probably t- Jamal. For, for me, it's Jamal. Uh, and not that I, Daryl Williams is a fine player, but I, uh, Jamal was handpicked by the new regime uh, to come in and and be the one that spells DeAndre Swift. I I I lean with Andy that I think Jake Dobbins is the trade, but it, it is not. It's not easy to me because yes, the pass catching is not there, but to me, if at the end of the year. J.K. Dobbins has 13 rushing touchdowns, and DeAndre Swift, due to what's going on with the Lions, has five. That won't surprise me in the slightest, and that type of a touchdown gap more than makes up for the difference in the pass catching where Swift can have 60 receptions and and Dobbins can be down in the 15 to 20 range, but that amount of touchdowns really changes things. It really changes things on a week-to-week basis where it's not just averaging out your points over the course of the season, he's giving you touchdowns. He's giving you burst games that win you the week. He had uh, 9% of his rushes were for 15 or more yards, which is the highest percentage of runs by a running back in the league. He was absolutely outstanding. And I know we are eh, – we're all kind of lower on Dobbins consensus-wise than uh, what seems to be going on out out there in the industry. But it's hard. Of, of the players where I feel like there will – there's a high chance that there's egg on her face. It Dobbins is one of those players. I completely agree with that, that, that there is absolutely a world where, because I'm, I'm pretty, when it comes to like draft capital, what you have to spend, where he is in my rankings, I'm, I'm pretty out on JK Dobbins and he could absolutely be a top five back. I, I, I recognize that out. I mean, you did have Mark Ingram, even when he wasn't catching a lot of passes with Lamar Jackson, have five receiving touchdowns a couple of years ago. So around the goal line, maybe those receptions are, are more valuable. And, and we've seen Mark Ingram as a top player, and Jake Dobbins is good. So I'm, I, I agree. Total egg could be on our face. But and, and we know that at, at the end, the, the end of season rankings of like the top 12 running backs, the majority of those guys will be on – very good teams, and you'll you'll just have a couple outliers running backs like James Robinson and, and uh, David Montgomery who will finish high, but they're on bad teams. I do think that Dobbins has the the worst outcome too, though. Where okay. if because because we lowest we, floor, yeah, because we lived it. I mean, we lived efficient Ingram and inefficient Ingram, and so if you don't score enough, and I mean touchdown efficiency, if you don't score enough, you could be in the least. Like Clyde edwards helaire is very safe. I think. I agree. I think and I think so Swift too, yeah. is pretty safe, too, with just how few weapons they have and the fact that he will get the ball thrown to him a ton. Yeah, his upside is limited by the offense, but he's going to be so right. involved that he'll be consistent. Where, where Dobbins, I mean, he does. You talk about who am I worried about taking carries away. Like, the best backup in all three of these situations is actually Gus Edwards. Because Gus sure. Edwards has been one of the most efficient he, runners for the, great. the first three. I, I don't remember the exact stat, so I'm not going to try to hit it yeah. out of the park. But it was something about first three-year efficiency, and it was like, you know, being five, over five a carry, and it was like him and Chubb in history. Right. And it was like for the first three years of their career, and Gus Edwards has just been effective. And so when you talk about, you know, the level of, you know, they like him. He's been on the team for a while. Um, so, yeah, we could look dumb with Dobbins, but he's like one of those players that you're making the call of like, well, I'm okay missing here. And how up in Detroit, though, how many checkdowns is Jared Goff allowed before his really high T coach bites his kneecaps off? Oh, but because that's got, it's a low checking down is very low T. You got it a, is that's oh, a low yeah. T move. Oh, low T. Why move, they yeah. trade for Goff? 
uh, well, you got to understand he he's going to get the ball handed off when they're down by a lot as well. Still, so uh, that, oh, yeah, that's yeah, the super that's high T. So yeah, it should make balances up. out. Yeah, okay. yeah. And can we go back to something Mike said just a minute ago? There was a yes, point in which yes, we please. like Guns Mahoney, right? There was a, a, a oh, point dude, in time as, as a tight end coach. Whoa, <laughs> look at that guy on the sideline! Heck yeah, uh, head coach TBD. Uh, yeah. But yeah, going back to something Mike said, I just want to. I want to ask you, Andy, PEDs. from the vantage point, let's say that you are a fan of the Chicago Bears, and someone says sometimes a running back comes from a really bad team, like you know, the Jacksonville Jaguars with James Robinson or, or David Montgomery from the Bears. How would you feel? Would you feel like that's fair? Do you think of the I Chicago Bears? I think that Bears, the Bears fan would be disappointed to be lumped into that group. I felt, I felt bad for them for a second. They were a 500 team, right? I think they were eight and eight. Yeah, they were all right. Right. When all right. you're feeling, but, but take that. When yeah. you're feeling kind of, you know, bad as a Bears fan, just say what you say three times fast. Justin Fields, Justin Fields, Justin yeah, Fields. Yeah, that's right. It's and then you better. start to feel better. Before we move on, I'm dying. What is? What's the score? Oh, what good, is the good, score? Thank of you the, for the update. The, the Suns game. Um, oh, let's uh, hear it. no, the last update. Are we still up? Um, the last update was it's the same one. Three, oh, no. 318 oh, no. left in the second. Call your dad. Check on him. <laughs> see if he's okay. Uh, he says he's going to probably skip the second half. Mm. So, Because um, okay. he already knows what happens, right? <laughs> I mean, why would you watch it over? Uh, his quote now, his most recent one was, um, I can't watch enough of the Lakers getting thrashed. Thumbs up. I got you. So, and then, <laughs> oh, man. We're gonna get it. We are Chicago awesome. fans, the L.A. fans, Detroit. Wait, Detroit can fans get, can't be happy. Well, the, yeah, they're small market. Yeah. Where, where's where's the New York? <laughs> Let's just take everyone out. Oh my! Uh, we love you all, Foot Clan, from all cities. We didn't get to talk about your Pat McAfee oh, yeah. appearance yesterday. That was, that was fun and unexpected. We uh, my my joke tweet about Julio Jones going to every team in the league has gotten picked up everywhere and people think it's super serious and i got i'm to not go sure on. aj hawk was isn't still oh he no. trying to drill down those 25 finalists you had identified yeah uh it was a, it was a fun time to go on the pat mcafee show and talk about that and uh, goof around and um continue the joke mm -hmm. to uh that was, that was fun be super serious <laughs> you you went from like having tweeted that to them talking about it to being on the show in like five seconds it was a whirlwind of 15 minutes so where is he going <laughs> Well, according what to my sources, what are your sources saying about Julio? Say uh, they say that he is uh, currently not going to the Los Angeles Rams, but every other team is in place. Though, all I've, right, I've added to the list. Did you? T is Atlanta still on the list? Yeah, I mean, but you left them on. That's after a, a trade back. Trade back, yeah. <laughs> trade well, backs. I do. I do think there was some news on that front. Uh, Arthur Smith. Arthur was. Um, he was not non-committal as to whether Julio would show up at at OTAs. All right. So helpful. All right, another keep trade cut here. We got a walrus. Oh, do -do -do -do. Against a couple Seahawks here. Keep trade cut. Darren Waller, Chris Carson, hmm. DK Metcalf. So we're going cross positional keep trade cut. Going to the sea. I guess we're going to <laughs> we're going to the sea. A uh, couple of Seahawks and a walrus. Darren Waller, top eight tight end in 11 of 16 weeks. We've talked about him a lot. Chris Carson, he's averaged 19 opportunities a year the past three years. DK Metcalf, you know you know those uh, quads, those calves, those, yeah, they, that ascending talent. They don't – we haven't seen that one on Twitter yet due no. to the not safe for work nature yeah, the DK of DK Metcalf's, Metcalf's quads. Met quads. Um, <laughs> sure. 129 targets last year, 83 for 1303 and 10. Wide receiver seven finish. Uh, how do you feel about these three players? Uh, so I, I like all three players. I think that they each serve a valuable role for your team. But the more uh, that I've done mock drafts, the more that I've you know dealt with roster construction in 2021, the more I'm convinced that if I were to take one of these three players who are all going around the same spot currently in drafts, one will help my roster far more than the other two. And that's surprising to me, but it's Darren Waller. Um, I am super convinced of his, uh, you know, 
supreme dominance of targets in that offense. He will absolutely be the main guy. So he's just going to repeat what he's done the last two years, which is be, you know, like a, a hundred reception type of player at tight end where you can't make that up later in the draft. If I miss on Chris Carson and I miss on DK Metcalf, they could be great. They could absolutely be great, but it's going to be very easy to replace at least a large percentage of those points with someone in the next round, in the next round. But once you get past Waller, and and to me, I would throw Hawkinson in the mix of solid, not uh, certainly not guaranteed to be uh, a weak winning positional advantage week in and week out. But I, I would into the mix with who? Into the mix with Waller and Kittle and and uh, Travis Kelsey, uh, just as far as irreplaceability within the position not Andrews and Andrews but okay. he would be next on that list uh once so, you get past that it's just we got to pay a lot more for Metcalf right now than you do Darren Waller yes not that that's the question with the keep trade cut but um which I will get back tough to. but now I gotta ask Jason this question yeah because I'm with you I I the more I'm doing mock drafts just I'm grabbing a tight end early it's I mean, I'm just embracing this philosophy this year. This is what I'm doing. You're you're getting you're getting into this, Mike. Yeah, I'm, you might if you're not careful, you might take two of them. You might end up taking two tight ends. You better watch yourself. It would just be an accident. Which I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you brought. I'm glad you brought it You'd up. You'd probably be fine if, if you grab Kelsey in the second, Waller in the third. You probably end up okay. It, you might, <laughs> but it, it, we haven't had to field that question in a very long time. It's been a, a hot minute since there's been uh, the Jimmy Graham and Rob and Gronk, Gronkowski. Yeah. Uh, do not draft two of them with your early round yes, picks. Don't do You're it. You're like, well, I get to put him in my flex. No, then you have to. You you have no choice. Your flex is now your tight uh, end. The other tight end. Your tight end too. Because there's there's no tight end two spot where you get to swap in players. It, your your flexibility when you draft the two tight ends, it it goes way down. So I do not recommend. And there's that. one of you in every league that thinks that's the that'll be the cool move. Yeah, it's it's like it's hip. You're in. You're Look in how vote. different I am. You, is there, they're going to come trading for one of these guys? Yes. Oh, so never draft a trade. Okay. Never draft a trade. So r right now I'm looking at the uh, uh, the ADP. From, I might draft Hawkinson to trade from sleeper to Jason. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he'll give you his first rounder. Uh, so right now the half point PPR ADP from sleeper has Darren Waller at like the beginning of the fourth round. Yeah, I saw three twelve. Are you? Yeah, that was the PPR ADP. Oh, okay. Are you, Jason? Are you? more in on that and because we all consider Darren Waller to be very last year he was it didn't feel like he was safe I, I think I've I've thrown all those fears away uh this oh, year. coming into the year didn't feel yes. safe yeah. yeah last year they added rugs they added Brian Edwards they e did all that this exactly. year they lost Aguilar and had John Brown so are you more in on Waller for a the a back of the third round or using that back of the first middle of the first on Travis Kelsey. I I so it's it's tough because you don't know for sure that you'll get Waller there. If I knew for sure I could go beginning either direction, the, let's, if let's I could go, go either direction, the third, I would absolutely take Waller at 312 over Kelsey. In what the about back Waller at 301 versus Kelsey at 109? 301 versus Kelsey at 109? I think I'd still go Waller. It's right. it, that one's really, really close. That is going to be a, a decision first that people are going to have to make. It, you know what you're giving up in. You know, a lot of people are taking um, Kelsey well, over Tyree Kill on the same offense. Well, Kelsey and, and Metcalf are going right next to each other. So yes. let's let's say <clears throat> Zeke and Darren Waller, or Travis Kelsey and Clyde edwards alaire I would go Zeke and Waller. Okay. Yeah, I mean that, that's going to be the dilemma. If you're going tight end, if you've committed to it, mm -hmm. it's like, do you play with fire or do you grab Kelsey? Because <laughs> somebody else might have the same idea. That's, that's the thing is whenever you make the investment on the first guy, you, you just get him. You know, okay, I don't have to worry about tight end the rest of the way. You pass on Kelsey in that first and you go. <sighs> yeah. yeah, I mean. Start and then, getting the sweats. <laughs> and then Mike takes Waller at like 302 and I go, no, 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 no. His ADP was 312. Uh, Mike, excuse Mike. Me? Look at this document here. I have the script. Yeah. And you are off. <laughs> I did not know we were off book yet. I have the script. Yes. All right. Keep trade cut. Waller, Carson, Metcalf. Um, I will. I'm trading Metcalf, keeping Waller. Are you? So you yeah. both are keeping Waller? I, I just, I think that, and the different, uh, 
People love DK Metcalf. Chris Carson is being undervalued. But he has to be the cut here. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I was real close to keeping Metcalf. I, I mean, nobody would blame you for keeping someone that could well, still no one, take a no step forward. If no one will blame me, I'm going to go DK Metcalf. <laughs> okay. Oh, he lied! I blame <laughs> you so much for that because you're the only one that could have done that. Oh, my goodness. And then I'll, uh, I'll trade, trade the walrus. Um, <laughs> let's, let's look at Tier 5 wideouts, okay? Now, that's not the same thing as saying these are wide receiver fives, all Correct. right? This is uh, alluding to the ultimate draft kit and, and our draft rankings and breaking them down by tiers. And these three players all fit in the fifth tier at the wide receiver position. So Adam Thielen out of Minnesota, Robert Woods with the Rams, and DJ Moore with Carolina. Uh, very close in our consensus rankings, obviously, to be in the same tier. Robert Woods, consistent, top 17 wide receiver, three straight years, Matthew Stafford and company. Adam Thielen, we've talked a lot about him on the show, but big touchdown totals last year. And then DJ Moore, we need more touchdowns from him, but he's an yeah, explosive player. And uh, Sam Darnold, so... I, 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 go ahead, Jay. I was going to say, I'll let Mike go first. Cause I've been, I hopped in first on these last two and uh, I don't want to have the new guy come in and steal the show. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Sam Darnold, at least, uh, his first couple years in the league was sustaining a touchdown percent percentage over four until Adam Gase completely broke him last year. And it dropped down to two and a half, two and a half percent. God, so bad. That's, that's unfathomably bad. I feel like Andy could do that. Yes. Two and a half percent? Yeah, yeah. I think you could do Thanks, that. Thanks, guys. You're a two and a half percent I appreciate type it. of fella. Yeah. I like, like my touchdown percent like I like my milk. That's right. <laughs> two and a half. Um, <laughs> that was not a good one. It was so close. <laughs> like, if it was two percent, that would have made. No, I mean, I was going to make I was, a milk joke soon. I was soon. in on it, but <laughs> it's like two and a half is not a, it's not a milk. <laughs> it's just close to a milk. <laughs> Maybe so it's it 0.5 percent closer to the cream. Which rises to the top. There you go. So, Adam Thielen, I am, I am very concerned. I am concerned the just with the age. It feels like like maybe the the cliff is coming for Adam Thielen. Even though he caught a whole bunch of touchdowns, you saw nine games with four or fewer receptions last year. That is not that's not the volume I need from someone who's supposed to be a possession wide receiver, and. Robert Woods, very, very safe, but man, I, okay, I I'll, guess I'll I, jump in. <laughs> I guess I would, I, I would take. I'm going to keep DJ Moore. I'm going to go one more time with it. I know it. All the arguments are last year's arguments, but you still had eight games of more than 90 yards. Like DJ Moore, I had him on my team, and and I played him basically every single week throughout that stretch, and. While the fantasy finish, you can look at them and uh, and his his finishes were not necessarily great. Like the, oh, he's outside of the top twenty four, forty percent bust rate. Yeah, yeah, it, but it never it never felt like DJ Moore was killing my team. So you didn't start him for forty percent of the, <laughs> I was say, the game. I was going to say that's that's t here's the tough thing for me. I do I believe Carolina's going to throw the ball to Dan Arnold a ton. That's all Dan Arnold does. They signed him to come in and play. Pass catching tight end. I believe that Christian McCaffrey this kid just wants to catch rocks. That's right. Um, there's there's a world where DJ Moore, like DJ Moore, if I had to put the odds on it, he's the third leading receiver on the team in terms of receptions. Oh, you're saying behind McCaffrey and behind Robbie. McCaffrey and Robbie Anderson in total volume, and that's not a reality or a possibility for Robert Woods or for Adam Thielen. So if I'm looking at through that lens, I'm just going to go ahead and keep Robert Woods. I'm going to keep that safe option there. Um, I'm going to trade, I guess, DJ Moore to Mike, or I'll trade Thielen away and I'll cut, cut more. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on the keep Andy. I'm, I'm keeping Robert Woods It doesn't Woods feel here. great to keep Robert Woods here for it, some reason. See, here's the he's thing. He's not it, shiny. It does to me because I know he's always going to outproduce this value. He's not shiny, but the, we're talking about tier five whiteouts, right? So presumably I've already gotten a whiteout or two on my roster. I've got the high upside guys, which are usually sometimes more volatile because they've got the, the deep ball ability. Um, Robert Woods is a stabilizing force in my wide receiver two spot. I love that. And then when I compare Adam Thielen to DJ Moore, and I'm like, who would I rather draft? Now, Adam Thielen has done it. 
He is proven. He is far more uh, reliable historically than the, the DJ Moore disappointments. But when I look at 2021 and I say, what could happen? And what are the probabilities of what will happen? Can Adam Thielen break out, do better than last year? I, I just don't, I don't see that happening. I think his touchdowns are going to come down. Also within the realm of possibility is that this is the year the wheels fall off. He's going to be 31 years old. I don't think that happens. But it's at least something I consider when I look at his age. With DJ Moore, if he sucks, he sucks the way he sucked last year, which he was the wide receiver 22. So I don't think he's going to get worse than that. He had no touchdowns. But within his range of possibilities is a breakout. So I would keep Robert Woods. Then DJ Moore would be second. So he'd be my trade. And then sadly, I'm cutting Adam Thielen, who is still a player that I, I think will have a solid season. Not hooked on a Thielen anymore? Not hooked on a Thielen. It's more of a, oh. Oh. Not and, hooked on a Thielen. And yet it, it, the bust rate, I get it, for DJ Moore was high, but on our consistency. See, you were, I remember you. Oh, I was very bullish you, on DJ no, Moore. I, that's not my point. My oh. point is I. you might not remember this, but you, the DJ Moore ride, you didn't like it. I remember you not liking that ride through the first nine weeks. You got the you got like explosive play that happened against New Orleans, but I remember you being kind of. Was I? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what the, anyways, my statistical point was, DJ Moore hit our uh, our benchmark for a usable game fifty percent of the time, and sure. Robert Woods, Mister Reliable, fifty six percent of the time. Unbelievable difference. So, so you're telling me Woods is better. Got it. I'm telling you that for a six percent, uh, yeah, you want more the consistency. I will take. You're hooked the, on the ceiling. I'll take the big guy. All right. Very important keep trade cut here, guys. And I look. I wouldn't ever bring this up on my own accord, but. Look, it's in the show doc. Uh, this is being titled the Elmer's glue of the fantasy footballers. <laughs> um, you've got producer Al Borland. Okay. Mm. Okay. You've got uh, from Arizona. Uh, you've got Judge Giamatti, oh, also also okay. from Arizona. Okay. okay. Um, but you also have our editor-in-chief, the Borgogan. Mm, oh, man. Kyle himself, and he's from Atlanta. And we don't get three cuts? We have to. That's, that's ridiculous. Correct. We do have to keep one of them. I feel like I'm looking. I'm like, well... Can I just go waiver wire? Can no, no, I no. pick something up after the draft? Can I read you their their trading cards real yeah, quick? I mean, I need to break this down. I need more details here. Uh, Al, uh, he's he's the oldest of the bunch, so I don't know if he's over the hill here. He's thir 38. Oh, my okay, goodness. So 38.1. Age problems for sure. Um, has some knee problems, speed score issues. Uh, we know the ow, ow, ow. Owie, 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 owie. That, was, that was more of a, a That was Achilles. But. Yeah, it was a, no, it was Achilles for him. It wasn't, <laughs> but in his mind, it was definitely Achilles injury. And then um, – He was never going to play again. He took the wonder lick. He's an award-winning liar. We know that from the Spitballers podcast. Oh, that is podcast. true. Yeah. Yeah. Al, you are an outstanding liar. Yeah, and then Judge Giamatti is a mere 34.2 years old. Okay. Okay. Um, speed score, I think we know that. He raced to the ocean faster than, I mean, if this he was, was a race, yeah. he's the key. A lot of uh, heart. Practices law. Filthy rich. Filthy rich. <laughs> Dirty. Um, that is that is one of the things we need to keep in mind here is that he could help support if we need a grant. entire show, give us a grant. <laughs> yeah, the John uh, Hammond of the show. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so far when I'm comparing that, you know, youth, uh, clearly toughness. You know, I've never heard the owie. Um, but let's. What are what are our third options here? Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. You're making some determinations. The last one, obviously, Kyle the Borgogan, editor in chief. He's thirty three point eight years old. Really? Yeah. He's the youngest of the yeah. bunch. Um, That's shocking. Uh, Have you seen this he guy? He owns some books. Owns them. Right. Uh, he's always like in he's, front of his library. Not, like, a, not a not a renter. No, 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 no. He doesn't. He doesn't no no library out? stuff. No, mm. he's got his own library. What if? And then he wants our, he wants us to look at his Peloton numbers for mm -hmm. the speed score. They are impressive. Is he rigging that machine? Yes. Okay. Well, oh, certainly. Man, that's like. Do you remember what if back he did? in the day? Would we let him go immediately if he, we knew he was rigging his Peloton numbers? He ties bricks under his feet so that it's harder in the beginning. But once you're going, you don't <laughs> have to. Is you don't have to do anything. Have that's... you ever gotten going so fast on one of those though, where you're like. You have you you can't stop immediately unless your feet are going to fly off. Do you guys remember the NES game mat? The, the yeah the, the power pad the power pad yeah, you, where you'd yeah. run and all I would do is I would get down on my hands and knees and just oh with the hands with my hands of course because that's what everybody the did. the cheetah oh man I was so fast 
You don't do the hands on the Peloton to get the numbers up? <laughs> no, that's, yes. <laughs> I just, just sit, down sit on the floor and I, I roll those things. So um, keep trade cut here. I mean, I don't like being put in this position. No, I'm not. I'm without never multiple decide cuts between these guys. I love all three. Couldn't do any of this without them. And um, even though I want to cut all of them, I'm going to keep all of them. Oh. Yeah, it's sweet. Aww. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike, are you more vicious? I mean, I uh, I will just go. This is a matter of practicality. The judge was here first. Okay. Oh, the judge is kept right. Second, Al was will be owl. A, he won't the wealth <laughs> and the money. Mostly the <laughs> Mostly money. Mostly the wealth. <laughs> yeah, I think the name of the keep trade cut Elmer's glue of the company kind of indicts the cutting of anybody. Right. I mean, we need the all the all the who pieces. made this show doc. I'll, I'm I'm a Kyle did. I'm very gluey. Kyle made the show doc. Yeah, yeah I guess we kind of we kind of keep things together. Yeah, Kyle gets the cut. Yeah, he's out. He's out. Yeah, plus he's he's fudging those Peloton numbers for those, sure. Those can't be real. Let's do some mailbag. 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 I like that. I like that. Kyle's just trying to now go. Yes. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Kyle's just trying to work himself into the doc a little too much. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I think. That's clearly Ego. it. Yeah. yeah, we didn't put that down as one when of When I think of a man who has no humility, right? that's the Borgogan. Right. Mm -hmm. It's him or Brooks, for sure. Right. Um, here we go. We've got a voicemail question to kick off the mailbag. If you have a question, you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB, or click the Submit a Question button. This is Brandon from Kentucky. Uh, was wondering if you would trade the Rookie 109 for Cortland Sutton. Thank you. Okay. I would. Ooh. I know. I know. Well, that... I don't there, hate... There Cort goes the argument. I don't hate Cortland Sutton, but I, I would. I would do that trade. I mean, uh, you know, based on the last show, I I, I, I think very highly of Cortland Sutton's future um, and his present. And the 109 <laughs> is, young, is obviously going to be younger. You have an issue here with Cortland Sutton where he's on the last... Like if I was going to make the argument against it, Cortland Sutton is was a second round, a high second round pick, but he doesn't have the fifth year option. So they're going to have to work out an extension, or else, you know, this could be bad dynasty outlook for Cortland Sutton. I think from what I'm hearing, they're going to work out a contract, but that's no guarantee. That would be the only reason to not do it. I would take Sutton. It's a good point. Looking at our rookie draft and the way it fell out at the 109. It says you could have grabbed your favorite quarterback. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence. Or of the Yeah, Lance, whoever your favorite was, or you're looking at a positional player like Jalen Waddell uh, from Miami, Rashad Bateman, Baltimore, Rondale Moore, Elijah Moore, those type of guys. So, Yeah, I would take Portland Sutton over. I would, I would take the player who has proven it in the NFL. Because uh, I, I, while I like – everyone loves rookies, and I like those players, but – we know that Cortland isn't going to bust. I agree. So I agree. I'll I take think the player. You name all of those players, and I can see upsides and downsides for all of them. Yeah. And so you're right in that mix. Now, if Superflex League throws it out the window, you're not, you're not trading that 109. Now, Andy, you, you saw me notice something, and you gave me eyes like, what, what was that about? It yes. Was, it, you were, you were uh, reading out our voicemail hotline, and I, I realized I tried to say it in my head. I have no idea what the number is. I've heard it. What so show, try, what show we, is this? This is the show 1500 or so? Okay, so I, I will never no, know 1059. that. 1059. I will never know that number. So what is the number again? 302-464-FFB? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so I will remember it for about 15 seconds after. The, well ask done. me at the end of the show and we'll see. Okay. All right, we have a Dynasty Startup Draft question from Brandon in Virginia. Do I draft CeeDee Lamb or Calvin Ridley? Um, if put oh, into that situation in a dynasty startup league. I'm taking Calvin Ridley. I am taking Calvin Ridley. Without a doubt. This okay. is clear, all three of us. I, I love C.D. Lamb. He's a little bit younger, but he's still got to take that leap yeah. that Calvin Ridley already did. I think 100%. he's a lot a bit younger. Well, he's, I think 22, he's 20. Ridley's 26. <laughs> Ridley's tw Oh, he's the yeah, Alabama Ridley, guy. Ridley was older, yeah. Alabama. But it still doesn't matter to older. me. I agree. Uh, you you got to take the guy that's made the jump already. All right, let's go uh, Terry McLaurin versus Mike Evans as your wide receiver two. Instagram question. Ooh, man. McLaurin or Evans as your wide receiver two. 
I mean, this year I will I will defer to your decision. Oh, it's devious because I have in my current I got projections, it so close together. I Mike Evans is my wide receiver four, 14. Terry McLaurin is my wide receiver 15. And this – both are going to be solid. But if the ceiling's hit for both of them, I think that the ceiling is higher. Like Terry McLaurin could potentially be a top five wide Can receiver. Can I cheat code so I'm this one? I'm going to go one? with him. Can I cheat? Here's the cheat code. If okay. I have a safe wide receiver one, then I'm going McLaurin. And if I have a risky wide receiver one – then I'm going Mike Who Evans. Who is a risky now, wide receiver one, though? Let's say I think this. Jefferson's a little bit risky as wide receiver one. Let's okay. say this. Let's say this is your wide receiver one. You don't have any yet. You're on the clock. Taking You've Evans. gotten running backs. I think if that was the case, I would take Mike Evans as well. I have them back-to-back -back in my rankings as well, so excellent question. All right. Um, rookie question from Instagram. Uh, Elijah, Elijah. Part of the hashtag hefty boys. And oh. Peggy. Oh, hey, what's up, my hefty boys? <laughs> Who's a rookie sleeper running back you would be happy with? Mm, happy with? I mean, if they're a sleeper, you're not happy. You're just, like, hoping. Yes. Hoping with Michael Carter would count. Yeah, I'm, if Michael Carter counts, then he's there. Trey Sermon, if he counts, those those are the two that come to mind. I mean, if you're just saying, well, those are more known commodities for the rookie world and you want someone a deeper sleeper, a deeper sleeper. A deeper sleeper. Uh, yeah. Is that Kenneth Gainwell? Is he a deeper sleeper? Where'd you get those peepers? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Does Ramondre Stevens that, do That was the name. That was sleeper. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where'd you get those? It, the one for me, because I don't think Michael Carter. Oh, Ramondre, yeah. Michael Carter, by the time of, maybe he's a sleeper. I don't know. Defining a sleeper is a very difficult thing in fantasy football. But a player that most fantasy football players will be off of. It, that could in a in a crazy world in an alternate universe could actually have value it's Ramondre Stevenson from the Patriots what round was Damian Harris drafted in third round Th and and where was Ramondre fourth ooh I don't remember off the top of my head I'll have to look Jason? I, it would be quicker to look if his name wasn't Ramondre Stevenson yes yeah, fourth round fourth round I just was curious the draft capital yeah. difference between them because like you said I mean Damian Harris and so he's out of still there right now that is one of his – I mean, he, he puts a lot of <laughs> he's there stock into just being there. So. But it, the, this is not a good draft class to have deep sleeper running backs. Where to get those sleep? <laughs> yeah. If it was best ball, maybe Chuba. Sure. Just as a – you know, we saw it last year with – CMC going down. Oh, I, I firmly oh, man, believe I'm in, if Christian McCaffrey misses time, then Chuba would be. I'm in that great. stupid situation in our dynasty league where I'm C, I'm the CMC manager, and I'd like to just tuck Chuba on my bench. Mm -hmm. But every time I try to send an offer, I get some crap back. Man, hard to tuck a Chuba. They're trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So yeah. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, the trade offers to get Chuba are not. Not going well. Not going well. They he wants a lot, so he doesn't want to let me tuck a chuba. No, no, it's difficult. Which, I mean, that's tough, man. <laughs> and that's the end. Oh, that's all right. How we finished. <laughs> that was a footballer's episode if I've ever Ooh, seen doggy. one. Thank you. What's that phone number, Jason? Three zero two four six four TFFB. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.